Today I'm going to try to make a lentil soup that I enjoyed in a Turkish-owned cafe a few years ago. As I remember it, it was a lovely, velvety, rich orange-red soup, spiced with chilli, cumin and mint. As far as I can tell, this was something called, and brace yourselves because I feel sure I will pronounce this wrong, Merdimek Churbasa. I searched and sifted quite a few recipes for this soup and selected this one, which, looking at the composition, seems to be about the right blend of ingredients and spices to create the flavours that I remember from the soup that I ate in that cafe. Here's what we'll need. Quantities are in the linked recipe in the description. Olive oil, an onion, carrots, a potato, garlic, tomato puree. Then cumin, salt, sweet paprika, dried oregano, ground black pepper and cayenne pepper. Aleppo pepper would apparently be more authentic, but I couldn't find it anywhere. We'll also need five cups of stock. I'll be using vegetable stock made up from powder, not in this picture. That's about 1.2 litres. And of course, red lentils. These are the reddest red lentils I've ever seen. Also, dried mint. I couldn't find any dried mint, so I'll use fresh. And finally, a lemon. This is a Turkish recipe, and as you're aware, Turkey is in the news at the moment on account of the major earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria earlier this month. It's really distressing to see the loss of life and ongoing suffering. And of course, me here in my cosy home making a pot of soup isn't going to actually make anything better. There are other ways I can do that. But this soup is, if you like, a way of focusing my attention on what's happening out there. There is, somewhere on the page alongside this video, a charity fundraiser for Médecins Sans Frontières, which you may know better as Doctors Without Borders. They're on the ground in the affected areas, providing medical care to the injured, supporting essential health care during the crisis, and providing humanitarian relief such as shelter, food, warm clothing and hygiene materials to people who've been made homeless by this disaster. I'm not going to try to beg or coerce you to donate. The linked fundraiser is there if you want to, entirely at your discretion. You might also have noticed this video is, like most of my content, monetized on YouTube. If you think it might be callous for me to make money from this video at this moment in time, I've thought carefully about that and I'll talk a little bit about it later in the video. On with the cooking. First I'm going to put the olive oil in a big pan, then dice the onion and add it in. Frying for about 4 or 5 minutes until it's tender and just starting to brown in places. Then the peeled diced carrots and peeled diced potatoes, a little bit more frying. Then slice and add the garlic and tomato puree. Just a minute or so of further frying to cook the garlic and tomato, then in with the cumin, salt, paprika, oregano, black pepper and cayenne pepper, stirring vigorously to let those spices fry and come to life. But no more than 30 seconds, then in with a bit of stock to deglaze the pan and stop those spices from burning. Then the rest of the stock and the lentils, stir, lid on and simmer for half an hour. I moved that to the back burner which is smaller because it was cooking too vigorously on the front. It just needs a gentle bubbling simmer. Now I wanted a bit of bread with my soup and I felt like white slice might be a bit of an insult so I'm going to rustle up some sort of flatbreads. 150 grams of plain flour, a tiny pinch of salt, about half a teaspoon of dried fast action yeast and a glug of olive oil. Mix that together then about 100 grams of plain yoghurt. The yoghurt's going to provide most of the hydration for the dough. Stir to bring that together, tiny splash of water because it seemed a bit dry. Then turn out the dough onto a floured surface and knead it until it's fairly smooth. There won't be much time for that yeast to work, but that's fine. These are flatbreads. We might get some little bubbles. A bit of olive oil on a baking sheet and preheat my oven as hot as it will go, which sadly isn't all that hot. Divide the dough into four, roll into a ball and then roll out flat with some extra flour and then plonk the flattened dough on the baking sheet. When they're all rolled out, I just brush them with about half a teaspoon of oil each, then into the oven to bake until golden. While all that's been happening, the soup is cooked. The lentils are fully swelled up and are starting to fall apart and the potato and carrot pieces can be easily crushed against the side of the pan. Off the heat now and then blend it smooth with my stick blender. Whoops, almost forgot the mint. The mint's actually useful to put in at this stage because for one thing adding it late will preserve its aroma but also I know that I need to keep blending until I can't see any big pieces of mint left. This video is also a collaboration with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. He's going to make this soup too in a video on his channel. Linked here in the card and in the video description. Now, because of availability of ingredients over there in Nigeria, he might need to adapt and use some local substitutes. In fact, I know he will, because we've been chatting about those details, so that could be pretty interesting to watch. Now, you could use an upright blender for this, but I would recommend letting the soup cool a bit more before trying that, in case it splashes, which is far less likely to happen than with a stick blender. Whoops. Okay, while we're waiting for the bread to bake, there's just one more thing. A little bit of oil and sweet paprika in a small pan and cook it over a low heat until it sort of fizzes. This will create a paprika oil for dressing the soup. Okay, bread is done, let's put this all together. While that's happening, I just want to revisit that thing I said I would. This video is monetized. Is it right for me to make profit from a video on this topic at this time? To try to put that in perspective, 
Making video content on YouTube is how my income happens these days. Income that I use to be able to continue making more videos about soup or to pay my bills and income to enable me to make donations to worthy causes. But why am I not just dedicating the exact earned income from this video to that cause? Well, think about that. I have to wait until the end of the month to discover how much revenue this video will earn just for this month, and then the end of the following month to see what it earns in that month, and so on. And meanwhile, there's a humanitarian crisis happening. They need my donation sooner rather than later, so they already have it. Anyway, there's my soup dressed with the paprika oil, a little squeeze of lemon, and some torn mint. Isn't that pretty? Let's go over to Dining Room Shrimp for the tasting. That is so delicious and just as I remember it. It's got a beautiful velvety texture. And those spices, the cumin, the chili, the paprika, the oregano, the mint, all combined to make something really warming and delicious. This would be a fantastic winter evening soup. So as I say, this was just a bowl of soup and it was delicious. And I don't expect this to make sense to everyone, but for me, food is a way for me to connect to a culture. Maybe that's superficial, but to each their own. Now I realize that making this soup doesn't directly help the people who are suffering out there in Syria and Turkey, but something as ordinary as this bowl of delicious soup does help me to realize and care that these are human beings whose lives and culture and inevitably cuisine has all been suddenly overturned by a terrifying natural disaster. And realizing that reminds me to do something to help. If you want to help too, the charity donation is linked somewhere on the video page, entirely at your discretion. This soup was fantastic, I really recommend it, and I'll definitely be making this myself again for sure. I hope this has been interesting, and don't forget to check out Babatunde's video in which he'll also make this soup. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.